thank you. I want to thank everybody for letting me be up here, the SPRC and the worship committee. Um, just to let you know what's going on, this is an amazing congregation. We actually have nine people who have been through or are in presently going through school for lay ministry to become certified lay servants. Um, that's not the norm, by the way, for school for lay ministry. I think percentage-wise, uh, the dean of the school says we, we uh, if we don't lead the pack, we're right up there in the front running. Um, it's a good indication of what's going on in this church. So what we're starting, and I get to kick it off, is a series through the winter right up to Lent, where once a month, one of us will be sharing our message and sharing our vision from the pulpit. And I think, hopefully, that will bring some new ideas, some new words anyway, some new perspective, maybe be helpful, hopefully, to somebody. I think it will. All right, enough with the promos. Let's just dive in here. The title of my message and at the title of this whole service is Make Me a Servant. And boy, it is this, I'm preaching to the choir here. I know I am. <laughs> this, this church is really good at this. But this is, I, want, I still think it, 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 it bears mentioning and it bears talking about it because it's important. That's what we've been asked to do. Serve each other according to the gift each person has received. And I, if you don't hear anything else, I'm going to encourage everybody to get involved in some way, but that doesn't mean you have to come up here. Doesn't mean you have to sing or whatever works for you. But that's how you get involved. In my own journey, um, when Carol and I first moved, moved to Cedar Rapids, this would have been 1982, I will admit I had been out of the church for over a decade. Um, I was raised in the church, but then I went off to college, and like so many of us, I wandered off. And we wanted to, we figured we got here, we we're settling in, we we're going to raise our kids in this town. And we had both been raised in the Methodist church, so we decided, you know, probably be a good idea to, to take them to church. Didn't hurt that the Methodist church was our next door neighbor. Um, so we started going. But then what do you do about getting involved? I wasn't good at that. I had no, I had no history of that for my adult life. So you start little. I started little. I started by mowing a section of lawn at the church. Those, in those days, we had order of the mop. The church was so small, we had no janitor or lawn care service or anything like that. Everybody split it up and took a little piece. And that's how I started. And I know, boy, it didn't take long, though. That's all you need to do. Just get your foot in the door. Um, I know when we first came here, Christy, I'm going to tell Christy's story because she told me on the way over, I can tell it. Um, Christy has been raised in the church, and of course, um, in the church that sent Carol and I out in the ministry, she was a vocalist, and that's what she did. You guys here took it the next step. Somebody invited her to just help out with vacation Bible school. Just, you know, just help out taking care. We had a lot, a lot of kids running around. We could use another pair of hands. She said, sure. 
Uh, the reality was she was actually very flattered. That was the first time a church had asked her to do anything other than sing, um, which is another message. Uh, but we'll get there. Uh, and then, of course, a few years later, she, didn't, she continues to come here after we left. She didn't come here because Carol was pastor. She came here because you guys accepted her and found a place for her, for this to be her church. And, of course, now she does all sorts of stuff. She's, she sings for us, which I personally love. Um, she's in the leadership team. She's SPRC. She does vacation Bible school. If we can ever get our car show back, she does that. Um, she's involved. So that's what you do. You just you start where you're at. Why in the world do you want to do this? Of course, the standard answer, and as I was writing this, Carol reminded me, the standard answer is you do it for those other people, right? We do all of this for other people. I want to suggest using... One of Richard Rohr's famous lines, yes, and you do it for yourself. You do it for you. Let me explain what I'm talking about. What Jesus tell people when they asked him, How, what do I need to do to follow you? You remember that conversation he had with that rich guy? He said, you sell everything, you give it all away, you leave your family behind, and you follow me. Now, is anybody in this room ready to do that? I'm not. <laughs> Excuse me. Sorry, Steve. <laughs> so you start small. I started by surrendering one hour a week to mow a lawn. And then I surrendered a little bit more of my time and a little bit more of my effort and a little bit more of me. Because that's where it starts. That Your spiritual journey starts when you give up control of your life and give it to God. I don't know if any of the rest of you, but some, I know some of us are familiar with the 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous and other uh, recovery programs have used it. Um, and the first three steps are all about this. And I like Father, the way Father Martin put it. Step one, I can't do it alone. When we recognize that we need help in our life, that's the first step but we still have to give it up. And we decide that God can help us. Number three, I think I'll let him. And that's what we do. That's what we have to do. And we give up a little bit. We give up that control. And as you put more and more of your life in the hands of God, you become healthier you become more willing to give even more. And yes, like our scripture reading says today, that doesn't always make you popular in the neighborhood. Isn't that funny? Did you hear that today? 2,000 years ago, people did the same thing. Have you ever had anybody, let, you know, sort of chuckle when you say you go, you're going to church on Sunday morning? Those that don't quite understand, that aren't, aren't here yet, that's all right. We still love them. So, what do you do? Well, we go back to verse 10. Serve each other according to the gift each person has received. Opportunities will come up. Of course, so many of you are already involved. But do what interests you. 
if it's something, give it a try. Do what you love to do. One of my classmates at School for Lay Ministry loves to cook. And as we're all trying to figure out what our ministry will be, what our mission is, why in the world are we at this school, and how are we going to serve, she realized that the way she could serve was through cooking. Making sure that that fellowship time after the service was pleasant and had good food and good coffee and it was a good place to be. Making some meals to take to people who, who needed a meal because something had happened. Doing a, a, she did a food ministry and she's quite good at it. Sometimes you do things that challenge you. Be willing, when somebody comes to you or your daughter volunteers you to do something <laughs> that you've never done before at all, be willing to try it out. Who knows? You might become a videographer. <laughs> I'd never done that before. <laughs> So the, the key, though, is to do it. Just do it. We are truly blessed with this congregation and the abilities and the talent that is here. It's, it's amazing. And I, wanna I want to encourage everybody to continue. I want to encourage you, if you haven't gotten involved, do something, whatever. Something's going to happen. And if you find yourself and you're doing something, and, you know, I've been doing this, this. Us four people have been doing this for 20 years. You'd think somebody else would ask. There's a whole lot of people willing to do things, but they need to be, we're funny people. We need to be asked. We need to be invited. Because for a lot of us, we're not going to just jump in and shoulder our way into a group that's already been established. So if you want some help, ask. What's the worst thing that's going to happen? They're going to say, no, you're not going to be in any worse position. Heaven forbid, you might, someone might say yes. <laughs> or be careful who you ask. One day I was walking through the hall at Lovely Lane, and this nice little lady walked up and said, do you think Carol might be willing to sit on the preschool board? My response was, I don't know about Carol, but I would. Ah. <laughs> They'd never had a man on the preschool board. <laughs> but there wasn't much she could do about it now because she asked. <laughs> And I did it, and I'm proud I've done it. And it was really good for me to have done it. I don't know if it's good for them, but it was good for me. That's what this is all about. So when God says, you give up everything, yeah, you do. To really do it right, you do. But you gotta start small. We're real people, and you do it as Peter said, with the gifts that God gave you, push yourself a little. Try something new. Try something different. But try something for you. <laughs>